I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Bikeman? Present. B. Singer? Present. Boss? Present. E. Kiss? Fry? Present. Gross? Present. Schroeder? Present. Throm? Present. We have a quorum. All right, the first item is the approval of minutes from the June 12th meeting. Are there any amendments? If not, I would entertain a motion. Move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the City Council, June 12th, 2017. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? 7-0. I just want to start with saying thank you, Kevin, for chairing the meeting last no on June 12th. Okay. I appreciate it since I was gone. I did watch it on the website. So you had a good time when you were gone. Yes, yes, I did, I did. Okay, uh, public comments. Anyone that is not on the agenda would like to speak, you may speak for five minutes. Give your name, your address, and your ward. All right, we'll move on to business and discussion items. The first one is John and Bernadette Wilson. Are either of them there, here? No. Okay, um, before we have a little discussion, I, um, on this application, I noticed that they requested it for three days, and I did ask um, Debbie if anybody had ever requested more than one, and she said no. And I did ask Austin, did you get that done? Saturday. Saturday, which would be June 1st? First, yeah. Okay, July so 1st. I ask them um, just in case you decide to limit it to one day, consistent with all the other requests, they would want it on the 1st. Right? Yeah, July 1st, which is the Saturday, if you decide that one day is appropriate. I just didn't know if it was good to set a precedent where they could do three days and then the fourth day is July 4th. So. How do you guys feel? I don't know that we, we've ever granted multiple days. But yeah, I don't know that we've been asked. asked. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I don't ever remember being a question to us. Right now, our rules are that uh, you can do fireworks till 10 o'clock. Is that correct, Austin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can shoot them off till 10 o'clock. And these are the exceptions beyond 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, they're probably asking because it doesn't get dark till 10 o'clock. They're probably wanting those fountain ones and all that stuff. It says for a family reunion. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Ackerman, but just because it says 10 o'clock, it still happens after 10 o'clock, correct? Every year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got enough officers to make it <laughs> No. <laughs> But still, we can't encourage people to break the law. No. Again, no. I think Same. that um, also I know that dogs are an issue with fireworks. I mean, I don't know if somebody up, has yeah. dogs. And so what would you like to grant them? I think it's a good idea to limit it to one day. So would you like to make that motion? Yes. I move that um, we give John and Bernadette, Bernadette Wilson allow them to um, uh, have the waiver of July 1st for the hours of fireworks discharge. Till 11.30 as requested? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I'll, I'll, fill, in, I'll fill in the blank. I called, her, uh, called Bernadette and she said she didn't really know what to put down, but the first is when all her family is going to be in. Uh, so they were more than happy to abide to whatever we said. Good. So that was good. that was just more info. And I thought it was good too that they got all the neighbors even yeah. more than was <laughs> required on the uh, application. So I thought that's really awesome. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Seven zero. And you'll communicate that to Bernadette. Mm -hmm. All right, the next item is Six Michelle, up. first impression. 6-0. 7-0. 7-0. Brad's not here. There's eight of you. Huh? 3-4. 5-6-0. Oh, 
Did you not count yourself, Vicki? Never mind. <laughs> All right. Moving on, Hello. Michelle. Hello. I am Michelle Weitzel, and I'm here on behalf of Marysville Main Street. I believe that um, Debbie included, oh, and, and my guest here is Susie Ladder with K State Research and Extension. Oh, okay. Um, I believe that they included in your packet some information on the First Impressions Program. It is the goal of Marysville Main Street to um, see if uh, the City Council and uh, Mayor Grun would approve um, our participation in this program. It is sponsored through K-State Research and Extension. Uh, Susie will probably do, do better justice on, on description than I will, but basically um, it is uh, you work with a, quote, sister city of a similar size and goals as yours and um, in, a, in a 90 minute or farther radius away and you go into each other's communities and it's literally just your first impression of the communities. Maybe you have poor signage and they couldn't figure out how to get to your main street or um, they didn't know how to find your hospital or um, you know the gas station maybe they couldn't get information directions or something or maybe you have a rundown street or dilapidated building or something. Um, but you go into each other's communities, there's a little bit of training involved to tell you what to look for, and then you you provide that feedback to that community. Um, and the woman that I spoke to, I, my board was kind of like, ooh, this could get maybe a little negative, and the woman told me that overwhelmingly these things are positive, and just as for anything negative that you can maybe find in a community, there are things that you're doing really well and excelling in as a community, and those volunteers that go out into these communities find great things as well. We just thought no one had ever really done anything like this before and it might be nice to um, get fresh sets of eyes on Marysville. Um, so if you have any questions um, past that, Susie or I could answer them, but I believe the application and the um, brochure were included in your packet. Susie, would you like to share anything else? I just think it's a great opportunity to just get feedback about your community and you're having somebody else come in and we're going to go into somebody else's community. So, I mean, I think, you know, it's just, you know, it's just constructive criticism. It's trying to make the best better, you know, it's not to tear down a community, but just to think. Because sometimes we know things so well, we just don't think about what it's like for somebody else to come in our community. and. Like, well, everybody knows where the depot is. Well, not everybody that's not from Marysville does right. know where the depot is or whatever, you know, thing you're trying to yeah. promote or the pony barn, you know, and stuff like that. So I just think in other communities in Kansas, it's been done, it's been well received, and I just encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity. I believe there's no cost. It's so. free. So do you know how many years I've been doing this? Uh, I think just about two. Oh, okay. Oh, so we're on the cutting edge. I think it's been longer than that. I think it's been longer than that. Maybe we're I have on the cutting edge brochure. Bird, brochure bird, I think um, one of the really positive things that you, you are, it's actually a requirement of their um, program, is that you have a community meeting afterwards where you're able to share their results. Mm -hmm of that and that it will not obviously be just specific to Marysville Main Street and our members it will be open to to the council to the chamber to partnership for growth to anyone who wants to participate um, and and view those results hear those results and then see how we can all work together they um, encourage you to to have you know measurable goals to you know to to find out what you want to take from that and what improvements or what changes you might want to take and to do the what is it the smart measurement where it's like attainable, measurable, attainable, I don't remember what the S is. I think it's somewhere it in It kind of started out in Northwest Kansas because they had a community vitality specialist and so it's probably been going for longer out in that area of the county or the state and I just haven't paid as much attention but now they're bringing it this way like Clay Center. They went to Beloit and Beloit went to Clay Center and I know one day I was listening to the radio station at a Clay Center and they were talking about uh, doing it and getting you know the Clay Center people all pumped up and ready to have people come in and that they would be going there and I thought it was really a good explanation of what the program was and they seemed really excited to hear what another group of people had to say about it. So. Are, are you thinking that you would want just Main Street people on as a community group? No. Nope. Okay, because nope. I can see that council should absolutely council should be involved and mayor and at our joint meeting um, between the 
uh, Tourism Chamber, Main Street, and Partnership for Growth last Tuesday. We put the invitation out pending. It would be approved for anyone in, in those groups to participate. Obviously, the council, um, anyone um, could attend. I just um, have to submit those names. Like I said, there's it's not really a training, but there's kind of like a um, have, um, some packet of information of things to look for and, and things that you'll do. Uh, obviously, your time and your mileage, your meals or whatever, are covered as, or you are responsible for those as a volunteer but I had several names written down of people already want to go you have to have three but you can have up to eight or ten she said if you want to take two car loads of people to wherever you go you absolutely can so when I think I could learn a, as much from going somewhere as I could having someone come here on here it said um, there were associated costs such as time mileage meals yeah. mm -hmm. and so you're just saying it's a volunteer yeah like you pay if as you, you go. choose to go Carla you have to pay for your own meals and and you're you know using your own time all right that's well who are we enough. paying for then it's everybody an associated pays for cost. Well, that's just exp just an explanatory thing for okay. participants <clears throat> what I took from this is this uh, let's see state research and extension community vitality specialists will visit your community to further explain the process are we paying for that person's mileage and meals? I mean, no. they're coming here for nothing? That's part of K-State Research and Extension, and that's what we offer as our specialists, the, because of your taxpayer dollars, to do deal. things in programs yeah. like that. Just like we have ag specialists come give a soybean school or a corn beef farm school, or I have a specialist come out and do a program on aging or something like that. It's just okay. free because of our taxpayer dollars of K-State Research and Extension. So do you guys feel like um, anyone wants to go as part of the team to go to another community? Yes, yeah, we should and I, I mean, willing. I would say I have no dates. You'd be willing? No, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Austin wants to go. Hey, if you guys I mean, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> So we can get we can add to your list. Yes. And then once you have a date, we'll see who what that works out. Yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So we just encourage people from the council to participate. I think that's good. So would anyone like to uh, make a motion? Who could have the mayor sign the K State Research and Extension First Impression Community Application? I second it. And any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. All right. I will fill this out and get it to you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes, if you're interested, please email me. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm not aware of any notices or hearings, and there's one only one item on the consent agenda for the Kansas guidebook to purchase. Move to approve the consent agenda for $32.38. Second. That's an easy one, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. The next item is the appropriations ordinance. Move to approve appropriations ordinance 3653. Second. Any discussion? I did have a question, um, and this concerns the uh, $500 or $600 that we paid first impressions for 700 memorial books uh, for uh, Memorial Day. And it comes, it will come, if we approve, it will come out of the cemetery fund. And we have that one fund that we don't use. Could well, it be researched to see if that is a possibility that we can take the that cemetery. out of that's that fund? special parks, isn't uh, it? I thought, that was, I thought that fund was locked up. And we have the lawyer. Yeah, we have look, yet to figure out how to use that money. The lawyer was going to look into it, how to get it out of there. Yeah. we. We haven't figured out how to <laughs> utilize that money. It's like thirty-two thousand. It's been sitting there forever, and it's it's something about maintaining lots that are purchased in advance. But it seems weird that it's constantly locked up. I I was thinking if they didn't have stones at some of these permanent locations, we could buy stones for those specific. But that w that's a big legal discussion. So yeah. will you follow up yeah. with Craig yeah. on that? Okay. Yeah. So do, so um, so for now, it's going to come out of the cemetery fund. Mm -hmm until we can figure out how to open that fund up. Is there any, oh, Vicki, do you have something? Well, I was just going to say, I don't think that that money, that's taxpayer money, ought to be used to put stones on places that aren't when, when it's everybody's responsibility to put stones on their own families. I would rather see us fundraise or something and let people voluntarily pay for that. I checked and it's $50 to put a granite in front of each one of those. I thought we could find something cheaper, but we really, we can't, I haven't found it. I just want to say that. 
I just think that that ought to be a fundraiser so people offer it if they want to, but other people who struggle to put stones on their own family's graves aren't paying for somebody else's markers because they didn't get one. Very My good. opinion. Okay, and yeah, I have some things. I have some things here. Um, we have a convention of tourism. I guess they got out of here. I wanted to know on this hot. Hey, Michelle's here. Hey, Michelle. Yeah, I have a question. <coughs> On this reimbursement for the Convention and Tourism for the Highway 36 Association meeting, is there something you can bring to us to show us what, how Marysville benefited from that? Like brochures, what they taught you, some discussion matters? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think there was an article that um, Sarah put in the paper too that kind of talked about um, some some things that we're hoping to work on and, and obviously um, some initiatives that they already take, but I'm happy to provide you with anything. I would love that. I would love yeah. to have that as a matter of our record. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's all I have. I think for yep. you. Thank you, dear. Okay. Um, okay, I had a question about the uh, creative product source. I guess this would be for the Chief Ackerman. The pause and anti macrobi antimicrobial wipes, $169.04. Uh, does that come out of the DARE money? Microbial wipes, those are for disinfectant when we deal with people who get bodily fluids on us or something. Those would be Is that for your supply. first aid kit you were talking about, how you needed to no, update we, your first aid we, kit? Yeah, we haven't started ordering that stuff. We just started compiling it today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure the, the bill you're talking about. Was it's it it's creative the product product sources? Was it to the place, to the cause, any Matt? The antimicrobial wipes and hundred sixty nine dollars and four cents. Right, and he's already got those. Ordered them. Ordered. We paid. We were asking to be paid. Did, for. did you check? It was police that it was charged. We, yeah, it's on the police. That's book. a company we use on. I take the dare. He uses that for dare stuff. Well, that's and what I'm saying. If it's on the dare stuff, can't that come out of another fund besides? Can't that come out of like your? Drug seizure fund or something, or no, it should, come out, of, should, should come out of Dare School. Expense. No, I don't think it did. I we think that was my question. Do you look at it? I don't. I don't decide which funds those come out of. Cindy does. They put that. it under school resource. That's it. School resource. That's the same thing as the Dare. We did away with the Dare fund. That's what it is now. Okay, I don't want to talk to you about. Um, <coughs> I guess it's something we have to decide. But I did a. Uh, print out of how much it's costing us to put coffee in the police department and the streets department because here in the uh, office we buy it by the can and I'm thinking that paying this uh, who do we get our coffee from? Prestige Wonder I guess. Whatever they call it. Prestige no, Coffee. Prestige Coffee, no. Prairie Land or something? Pra uh, yeah, Prairie, Prairie Fire. Prairie Fire. Prairie. There you go. Okay. Um, In a year's time, I think your department ordered 400 and some dollars worth of coffee and Streets ordered $1,600 worth of coffee. And I'm thinking, and that turned out to be uh, here we go. That turned out to be 79 cans of the 8 pound cans of coffee a year. And it just seemed to me if we bought those $8 $8. You're talking about a thousand dollars. I'm less than half what street department is. I'm not going to speak for them. About. Well, that's for you. That's 79 cans at eight dollars a can for 477 dollars and 80 cents. That's the that's the police department. It was 201 cans for the uh, street department. And I just think that we can that we can. Uh, we they, can they, they've they've reviewed this a couple times in the last 10 years, and they keep going back to the same thing for the convenience and. Does they bring it there? They give us the machine to use. We don't. We'd have to go buy our own coffee makers and stuff. Then God, these are these are commercial $25. makers. Uh, not, huh? the, not if you're going to use it every day. You don't want those twenty-five no. dollars. You're talking about twenty-four hours. That thing runs twenty-four hours. Die. Still, still. If we paid fifty dollars for one, okay. I have an issue with this, so I just want you to know that. I mean, we need to talk about. Well, it. We need to some. I just not to be controversial or anything, but if I t I see four sixty-seven for coffee. I said that's at a dollar fifty a day for all of his staff. I don't, right? Three hundred sixty-five days, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's four. But what if you could see, like, instead right. of a dollar fifty a day, it'd be fifty cents a day? Okay. But, but it's not a day. They run twenty-four hours. So you I think about I'm it. I'm just it's thinking. Like I just put it to a day. Well, I want to fly away. sitting in there. 
drinking coffee. You no, know, but they probably have to come oh, no, back. No, 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 no. They just don't sit there and drink coffee. They fill their jugs up and they take them with them out. Exactly. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but anyway, I just, if you look at it from that okay. perspective, it doesn't look very, as much. Okay, well, let right? me see. Oh, okay, Chief, I don't think I have anything else there. <laughs> Are donuts included in that? I, that's just what he did. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Mr. Terry said that. I didn't is, hear that. Is that, bur is that buried in that cost, that prairie fire coffee system? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything um, else, Vic? Yes. Um, I was looking at the Walmart bill, and because I was looking at the Walmart bill, I had the Gatorade pulled, and we ordered 82 on this one bill, 82 eight packs of Gatorade. And that turned out to be $383.76 of Gatorade. Now, I don't know if you've read about Gatorade, but there's more sugar in Gatorade that's doing more harm than, uh, than if they were drinking water. So this was just on one bill. I'm a little concerned. But 15 eight packs for streets, 36 eight packs for water and sewer, 16 for parks and cemetery, and 15 for the pool. But, uh, you know, i got to kind of interject here for a moment, please Vicky. Do, please Gatorade do. does have electrolytes as well, which are good because plain water can't be absorbed by the body as well without the electrolytes. Well. <coughs> I'm just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. We had, what, two people go to the hospital with heat stroke. They had access to Gatorade, and they still ended up up there. Imagine. We could have had four then without the Gatorade. Do you think so? Could have happened. Well, I'm just saying. I just, I just think this is a lot of Gatorade. I think it's a lot of sugar we're shoving down people's throats. I don't think it's a good thing. But okay. it's less expensive than a hospital bill. <coughs> yes. Well, I'm not saying it's. And they make a they make a low hospital. sugar version too. It's just as good. Okay. Um, oh, I was asking about the street sweeper because of this seller's equipment bill here, and they charged us a thousand six hundred and twenty dollars. And what that was for was to make a report to the insurance company to say what they think, what they thought that the insurance company should pay, so we would get that bet, that POS back. That we ended up with that that street sweeper back when it should have been it should have been we sh we sh shouldn't drive that thing anymore it burned up and these people I mean I understand they're the people who repair it and they're saying it can be repaired well we haven't got it back yet and they're asking for their money I don't think we should approve this money until we get our sweet street sweeper back they already got the check and the insurance company is going to pay us back for that. That's sixteen hundred dollars on well, top of the check they've already sent us. Well, according to them, well, insurance should only reimburse us for thirty thousand dollars for that street sweeper. But the insurance is also working out because they thought they were going to write that sixteen hundred dollars off. But since they're not, they're going to send us a check once we show that we paid for it. They'll reimburse us. Well, my question is, why are we sitting here approving a bill we've already paid? I thought we were supposed to approve these before they got paid. I told her we wrote an advance check to get that there. All right. Don't like that. Okay. Um. I did look at that, and it said that they had spent 18 hours looking at the machine to estimate what needed to be repaired. Did you see that? Where it said 18 hours no, on it? No, I didn't see that. That's what the 1620 was for, 18 hours of work. Well, I just don't think they did their... I, I just don't think that's... We're going to get that street sweeper back. Something's going to happen. They blow up. <coughs> okay. Uh, new, uh, network computer solutions, software issues with the pool computer, $702. That computer is, what, a year old? And we're paying $702 for repair? What happened? It melted down. Uh, I mean, that's a, as simple as I can put it. It, um, for some reason, asked for a restart and one of the girls pressed it and it actually <coughs> wiped everything clean and it was just it was mayhem and I don't I don't think it should have taken that long to get it fixed but that's what happened okay so was this a software problem was this a hardware problem or was this a user problem all of the above and the, without calling anybody up it's all all of the above Okay, here's one. Identities. I think this is the right spot to talk about that. Identities. We bought four shirts for $104. And from what I understand, these shirts were for seasonal workers. 
There's a couple of names here. They're seasonal workers. And something else. Oh, those are the two names. Oh, yeah, That's it. Yeah. That was it for $104. Short, okay, well, here's my issue. Page 47 of the employee handbook. Uh, article miscellaneous P1 under A. Shirts with the City of Marysville logo are provided by the City to full-time employees who have completed their six-month probation in the streets, cemetery, parks, and water and sewer department. These are seasonal. They will never complete their six months probation. These are seasonal. Is and they were to complete... Is there anything in there that says anything about in seasonal or part-time employees? No. I think they have to have a certain color shirt on to work alongside the streets. Well, they could get a certain color shirt for $6. They could get one of those neon shirts. It wouldn't have their name or logo mm -hmm. on them. But this is what the policy says now. We either change policy or somebody's done something wrong here by violating policy. Or well, maybe we need to change that to seasonal employees as well. I think it's beneficial to actually, because you have seasonal employees that get left on their own to do work. Now, if they have to go through people's yards or in front of people doing, playing with fire hydrants or anything like that, it would be, be it'd be beneficial to them to have something that says, I'm official right here rather than mm -hmm. some concerned citizen going hey you shouldn't be messing with that or calling city hall hey somebody's messing with your fire hydrant sort of thing yes and that you want to bring a recommendation to council you want to change week? policy yep he'll bring a recommendation next week yep. next and week I, is that right? i'll talk to you okay no much yes all right and okay. I had um, one of the, or maybe two of the employees um, in City Hall uh, say they have never had shirts. And when they attend or volunteer at functions, it would be nice if they had a shirt. Is that true? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the City Hall, the staff. administrative City staff. City, okay. City Hall administrative staff. What? We've had a couple of papers. Okay, well, you want to make a recommendation for that as well? Okay. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second and lots of discussion on the appropriations ordinance. Roll call, please. Mikeman? Yes. B. Singer? Yes. Boss? Yes. Fry? Yes. Gross? Yes. Schroller? Yes. Trump? Yes. 7 0. Okay. Austin, we're ready for your report. <clears throat> All right, first up on the report is the airport apron grant agreement. And there's one final thing to sign for this agreement, uh, basically authorizing, uh, we just need to authorize the mayor to sign this um, sponsor uh, so we can keep the project moving forward uh, after the mayor signs it. Uh, then our city attorney signs it uh, as a... Um, saying that he certifies that we're able to do this project uh, and that's basically what we need to move forward on this project. Move to authorize the mayor to sign the airport apron grant agreement. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. <coughs> uh, bringing the budget workshop back up. Um, the July 13th date didn't work. Uh, for everybody, uh, so um, recommendation of July 6th was brought up. Um, is there any concerns about moving the budget workshop to July 6th? I will not be here for because I have a funeral out of town. Okay. No, Denny. Is everyone else able to come? Uh, I won't be here. May may not. Six all tournament week, six of July. Okay. And I would Date. only be here a no, half six. hour. Six. That's a Thursday. Thursday. It's a Thursday. Oh, you should be here. Keith. Did you say yes or no? What? That you could be here on the 6th. It's okay, depending. Yes. Bill, you said no. No. You said only for a part. You said no? Maybe. Vicky? Okay. Denny said no. Kevin? I don't think we have enough to have a meeting. So okay, well, tell me what date we can do it then. Can you do it on. Um, you hate to do it on the 3rd? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you have it ready by the 
30th is this week. Can you have it ready by Friday? <laughs> okay. Um, you Do you want to meet for an hour before the meeting on the 10th? Mm -hmm. Do it on Tuesday the 11th. Or Tuesday the 11th? Tuesday the 11th? Oh wait, I'm out of town. Nope. No, Tuesday the 11th. That won't work for you then. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the 10th an hour before the meeting. Can we have it done in an hour? No. You think we can? No. What? I don't think. I'd hate to. I mean, what if we do it? What if we do it on on two hours? Like take that two hours five, before. Five, ten. five ten. No. Yeah. Come in here at five, five o'clock and then have a meeting afterwards. That'll yeah. Work. You gotta get up early the next day. What the heck? No different. Yeah. No difference being here at eleven o'clock. <laughs> yeah. I think because we had limited amount of changes from the last one. Oh, last meeting and took there's, five hours. They're just an update of what the valuation is and. Uh, well, can anybody do it on the fifth? Faster, on Wednesday the fifth. I hate those meetings. I can't. I can't. Do it you can't meeting? do Wednesdays. Denny, will you be gone on the fifth? No. <clears throat> what about you? I should. The fifth? It's tournament, like maybe. I don't know. I'll be there. I like your tenth idea myself. <coughs> the tenth? Your early idea. That's right. my two cents. What? Five fifteen. I on like the tenth. Five fifteen on the tenth. Yeah. Five fifteen on the tenth. Then everybody can be excited to get the meeting over with on the tenth. <laughs> 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 okay. So. Get it <laughs> so five fifteen. So you'll have actually. You'll have um, the packet out and the budget packet out like that on the sixth. I, I'm hoping that uh, I'll try to get um, the packet out as early as possible, even before the, the other. Okay. Or get great. the get the budget out before everything else. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I like a little more time to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's not a problem. So since we were aiming for the six, maybe you can get it out early. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to mention about the cash Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, with the storm, uh, that large windstorm, uh, we had some damage to the Kester house. A, a tree, a rather large tree limb fell uh, onto the Kester house. Uh, luckily, it only punctured a couple holes in the roof and then took some of the soffit out on that um, west side. And, uh, we're lucky enough to miss a lot of it. If, if that branch landed any far uh, farther to the east, it would have taken the, that whole uh, half of the porch out. And so we were lucky. Um, they estimate about $5,000 worth of damage to it. Um, and then they'll reimburse us the temporary patching that we did and the tree removal uh, that they, the, or at least the branches that were on the ground um, that we had to get taken care of. Did, did our guys take out the one that landed on the roof or did we hire somebody else? No, we hired, it was, uh, it, no. it was a big grant. Individual, uh, first it was gonna be uh, Dale and his crew, but they looked at it and they, they thought there was no way to get any of their equipment that way. So we had Gutenkopf come in. How much did it cost and what was our deductible? Uh, I believe our deductible is $5,000. And how much did it ultimately cost? Uh, it's going to be about um, it's going to be close to six uh, to fix it, ac according to their their. So we're going to make a claim. We're only getting a thousand of it. Is that going to raise our deduct? Is that going to raise our premium? A claim? I'm not sure. Do you think it'd be better off just paying? Claims we have. Huh? Yeah. It depends how it, many claims we have at the end of the year. Yeah. In comparison to how many we had last year, so right. it's hard to say what we're going to do the next six months. I understand what you're saying. That's tough. Yep. But no, it's yeah. <coughs> but it's a, they'll pay for a thousand dollars of it, so it's hard to pass up. Okay. Anything else? No, I think that's all I have. Okay. And I did. I had asked uh, Austin to uh, include this overtime thing in the salary, comparing 2016 to 2017, and the. The only one that I asked him to find out more information on was the police department. 
there's chief sitting back there, um, because it was fourteen thousand dollars more from one year to the next. Overall. Did, and overall, and overall. the total salary. Yeah, total, total salary. salary. Did you guys have any other questions on this overtime report? That was in your information packet. Okay. You didn't have any other concerns you want to address? Okay. He's well, just gonna bring back some more information to us. Okay. On this, on this. Have we gotten to this hardware armor system? No, not no, yet. Not That's yet. Okay. Fire. All right. Okay. Um, City clerk, you have anything? Uh, not tonight. Okay. Last week you guys did talk about the CBK or last meeting, and I just wanted to let you know. Uh, I listen. I listened to it on the website, and then I came in and asked Debbie some questions, and um, I had asked for some additional information. As we understand it, after talking to Debbie today, our Muni court has, municipal court hasn't said anything to them since, did you find out if 08 was in fact uh, the last time we sent them? No, I think she had some stuff in 13, but she didn't know. So she hasn't said anything for several years. So, and so I asked her to, I asked Debbie to find out um, what our total receivable outstanding is, because our reports from municipal court don't tell us that. Mm -hmm. And to kind of see uh, what that number was, um, and when I looked at um, this graph, it looked like that, and I clarified it with Austin, when you look at this, the difference between uh, adding them, you get you get 20%. That's what they, they, you, they're basically aiming for. Right. But when we look at what we've done so far, I guess um, at the 33,000, we've only collected uh, 4,700, so. I just asked for additional information. I'll tell you exactly what I asked for, just so you know what the email said to Debbie. I asked her, um, let's see, if we have to give them all our receivables, those at state set off and those have not been set yet. And she said she didn't think so. Is no, we can set it up either way. Okay. Um, we would be the ones doing the tracking. If we sent stuff to them and sent stuff to set off, we would track it. If they collected something, then we would remove it from set off or vice versa. If we send it all through CBK, they do it all. So you have that option. Yeah. So either way. And then I also ask um, in the detail, which I don't, I don't think. In the details, she, uh, Debbie had mentioned that we had 33,000. Well, one year in 2014, we had one that. Are the amount sent in is fourteen thousand dollars, and she Debbie believes that's related to some of the property that was just mm -hmm. sold at the tax sale. So we're going to see if that possibly will bring that number down. Um, I said uh, I just wanted to clarify that there was no cost to the city if we prepare the resolution to pass the fees to the client, mm -hmm. and you said that's true, right? Right. And uh, one I asked for the total outstanding the municipal court, and then I said. Um, after hiring CBK, do monies flow to them and then to us? Do you yes, know that, that, that's, that's how true. it flows. Mm -hmm. It flows to them, they take their 30% and then flows right. to us. Mm -hmm. And um, then I asked her, have you checked with the clerks from other cities that are listed? Because they gave a long list of cities mm -hmm. that use them mm -hmm. uh, to see if they're using CBK and um, and what they have said about it. So er, Early on I did. Um, I did send out a list, sir, and there are a lot of cities that are fairly new with them, but. Um, Phillipsburg keeps coming back because they've been with them for a little while and I think that they've had good success um, and I'm still following up I think El Dorado was working on an ordinance as far as collecting the fees Phillipsburg sent their sample to me so we're trying to work out if you can do that if you can if you can um, pass it right pass it on to them or not for utilities municipal court we know you can so so, so we're just going to try to clarify if, if this 33,000 number is a true number that's still out there based on that tax sale to see what our total number is and then you have to figure out based on 20% of that is it worth doing but if it's getting 70% is better than 0%. Is there a statute of limitation on that Deb? I don't believe there is. I think okay. the cutoff will take it and hold it as long as as long as long it's out there. And I can't remember, try to collect. I can't remember once um, if from their contract, if it said that we had to give them so much business every month, no, or it's just a flat so. twenty percent. I don't, I don't, I don't read that. Correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, but when I listened to him, I thought the twenty percent was above and beyond what we owed. 
So the 30 percent. So, so no. So if their debt was eighty dollars, uh -huh. they would have to pay a hundred dollars, and they took their twenty percent off. If basically, the the debtor was paying. The if, the, yes. if we passed this resolution, right. So it wouldn't cost us any more. I mean, we would get our full hundred percent back of what was owed to us. Uh, CBK would collect the other their their twenty percent off of what off their side of it. So did that those questions basically cover everything you guys discussed about this last week? Do you have anything else that you want Debbie to find out for next week? Next meeting is really the question. Mm -hmm. well, we discussed also that uh, uh, once we had once we had filed and we'd gotten a judgment against them. Um, any court costs or any let's see any court costs they paid the collection agency got any interest on it they got uh -huh. I'm trying to think of all the fees that they got you know all that, we get is a principal we, well if we've paid money to collect it that was my problem if we paid court costs to get it and we didn't get it then I think if they paid court costs that we should get that we paid it I don't think the collection agency should get that money they didn't file well, we don't plan to do any court, do we? It would all be their court. It would right? all be on them. Yeah, right. All be on them, too? It would all be on them. Yeah, that's kind of how, how we're approaching it because we haven't ever used anything other, well, I shouldn't say we don't believe we ever used anything other than the state set off. So I think once we get the total number out of Muni Court, then we can decide what our potential gain is and whether we want to move forward. Mm -hmm. So did that cover all the questions to Debbie from last week, last, the last meeting? Pretty much? Okay. All right. Then we shall move on to standing committees. Street? Street sweeper. Status. I haven't gotten a status back from them. They were going to call me when they were ready for us to come down and test it out. Why can't we get a loaner from them? You know, we've had all these wind storms, all the debris, mm -hmm. all the limbs, all the twigs. Where's all that stuff ending up in our storm sewers? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we need to get a street sweeper up here somehow, some way. They've had this thing for how long now? Um, more than six months, mm -hmm. I think. Up to a year. I think we I think we need to do something. Has it been a year? Have them move along. September, I think. Last September, October. September, October. Yeah. I didn't realize it was. Yeah. Okay. okay. We need to get something out, uh, out of them. All right. Put that on your to do, Austin. Mm -hmm. Anything else on street? Carolina. Is it going to be open this week? Friday. They're waiting for the uh, tests to come back that they perform. Make sure they break right, and then they should open it up Friday. What's what's that? Carolina. 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 Oh. Yep. They got. They did the fours in two days, so it's. Uh, they don't quit. Yep. Are they going to paint North Street? They should have been working on that today. I didn't get to. Uh, did you Did you drive north today? Paint North Street. You had to. You had to drive 11th North. Yeah. Did it? Was it lined? It's lined, but then it started raining. So they stopped. Yeah. They're gonna. They were supposed to get it started at least today. So they're yes, they're gonna pay it. Yep. That that payment that was in the appropriations ordinance didn't pay for the striping. It paid for everything but the striping. So we haven't paid for that yet. Just so you know. Okay. Okay. But they are gonna do it. Anything else for street? Water wastewater. Yes. Was the cause of our sewer break on Third and Broadway? Because of an air relief valve. Yes, uh, and we have been waiting. Uh, we've had <coughs> Tony trying to design a, a new air relief valve so we can have a sturdier and more reliable air relief valve. And we, he's been held up on something, but he put a, a fire under it. So hopefully, we can have something ready for somebody to come in and put it in. We need to, priorities like that. This is a fourth one we've had this year. Mm -hmm. This needs to be moved clear to the top of everything we're doing I because agree. this is tremendous. I mean, four times now in the last four months. I agree. I mean, if, I if Tony great. cannot get Has this project fun? project done or fixed, we need to go to someone who knows what's going on with the system, a better he I was he was almost done. He was, waiting on, he was waiting on a supplier or something yeah. so we can get this nailed and get it taken care of. Yeah, I agree. We're just dragging our feet on the project, as far as I'm concerned. So, so that's your number one priority, Austin. You get tell Tony it's his number one priority, mm -hmm. so, or ask it to be. Ask him to be. 
Okay. Anything else? Water, waste, water? Uh, parks and rec. I had two things. At the last meeting, you guys approved the manager, these changes in the pool manual, and you said um, must be at least uh, 21 years or as deemed appropriate by the city administrator. And um, on the assistant manager, must be at least 18 or as deemed appropriate by the city administrator. And I guess um, from our standpoint, from our city standpoint, I felt like we should put an absolute minimum in there. And I think 18, uh, an adult, needs to be on the pool premises at all times. So since sometimes a manager is gone and the assistant manager is there, I really feel like the assistant manager should be 18. I don't, I don't think we should waver from that because I think we should have an adult from, from our, uh, of the appearance of our city council having the pool and such a huge liability um, I think we should have a minimum of 18 years in both of those spots just to say this is what our policy is. How do you guys feel? Fine with that. Mm -hmm. So it would just read must be at least 18 years old period? Anything? Because then at least we have an adult on premises at all time. I would entertain a motion. The move to change the pool, I guess, management positions manager and assistant manager, manager. And assistant manager to 18 years of age just, just to say must be at least 18 years must old be period at least 18 years old and then you, if you need to make an exception but that should be our policy All right okay is there a second i second it is there any discussion discussion are we changing this back the way it was no no because it was 21 before on the on the manager okay and you're taking out uh, administrator's discretion? I'm just saying there should be a minimum. He, he actually has all the discretion in the world for hiring. I'm just saying we as a city council should have a minimum in there to have an adult on site at all times. I think for, for, for our community it makes sense. We can say we have an adult on the <coughs> pool, at the pool, every hour that it's open. We pretty much should have. I mean, with the college kids and stuff we have coming back yeah. and stuff. So I just thought we should put an absolute minimum in there. So uh, we have a first and well, a second. When, when you when you and I discussed that this afternoon, I thought that maybe one of the managers that we had now wasn't 18. No, because they're, they're both 18, and I didn't understand why we were even discussing this issue then. Because I feel those girls are more responsible and have a better handle on this than what we've had in the past. So I thought if you were going to say that they weren't responsible enough, they have had all the training, but then later, after, after you and I went back and forth, I found out both of them were 18. Yeah. So I thought if the problem was that it was one of them that wasn't 18, I had all kinds of problems with that because they're doing so well. Yeah. But, it, but what you're taking away is the administrator's uh, discretion. I'm putting a minimum in there. Of 18. 18, so that we can Nobody. tell the people in our community that we have an adult on premise at all times. That's what I. That's what I walk that's away. That's what you're hanging your hat. Uh huh. All right. And just add it to what's. Yeah. Those are just two slight changes. Okay, so we have a motion and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Six one. All right. And then um, I just want to make a comment that the city park, I understand they just put a new floor in there, yeah. but the city park is really well maintained, right? I mean, I went, I went down there a couple times this summer. The floor they redid, they're doing a great job yeah. keeping it clean. What kind of floor do they put down? They the put city park where? The bathrooms? Uh, basically in the bathrooms. a painted floor. It's uh, um, epoxy. Something you, yeah, epoxy you put down in a garage. Have you been, have you been in there yeah. this summer? I assume it, we were painting. It's really nice. So I just am really grateful that our, our city park looks so nice. All right, any, but anything else for parks yeah, and rec? I, I got a quick question. The time and, or temperature of the pool, did that come out of the old manual or did that come out of the new manual? What do you mean? The pool says currently that it has to be 70 degrees and rising. Mm -hmm. Did that come out of the old manual, or, the, or was that? That is in? that is a standard uh, Red Cross uh, recommendation. Okay, I guess the deal that gets made: we let these people in at six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's fifty-four degrees outside. 
to do water aerobics and whatever else, swim laps and whatever else at, at 54 degrees, and they can swim till 7, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning. They swim from 6 to 8. Whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. So the pool's 70 degrees out. As long as it's not lightning, if we got people in the pool, why can't the pool be open? After 8? No, at 1 o'clock. If the temperature's 71 degrees, that pool, 70 degrees, 69, that pool should be open. That water's heated. Do they, do this, do they not have the pool? We, that's why I'm we asking. Why am I not is, in the pool if it's not 70 degrees? That's exactly right. It closed at 2.30. They it was on Facebook the other day. Closed at 2.30, 70. Now, if they can be in there 50 degrees in the morning, swimming laps and water aerobics, why but can't kids be in there in that's the a, afternoon? That's a, that's adults making the choice and that's what the, the people want. We that's why I was asking if it yeah. was the road up for the new pool or was that something carried over from the old pool because well, the old pool was not heated. The old pool wasn't heated and it was always open. Does it make a difference it, from the Red Cross if it's a heated pool or not heated? The, the thing is the, the policy says one thing and they were following it. Uh, huh? The 70 degrees yep. outside. The pool, 70 degrees outside. Outside. They're not oh. down to air temperature. Oh. Air temperature. So the, air temperature. So the, the, not the water temperature. There wasn't anything wrong with the pool. No, no. no it was no. just outside, outside it was less than 70 yeah. degrees. Right. Yeah. It's and uh, that's what's in our manual right that's now? That's what's in our manual. Yes. But but that's what I'm asking. Did outside that come out of the old manual? When the pool was not heated, mm. or was that something no, that I'm was sure put in in the new one. manual? I'm sure it's the it's new manual. It's in the new one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in. in the the mayor, that was in the old one as well. Yeah. It was always been that way since I was teaching swim team years yeah. ago. Well, seventy degrees outside. Yeah. It's nothing new. Well, we we so, so the key thing is, yeah. on a Sunday, uh -huh. we shut down the pool because the outside temperature is less than seventy. Yes. At 2.30 in the afternoon, after we were open Can we check with the half. Red Cross and see what's <laughs> recommended? That's no good. Yeah, why don't you follow up with the Red Cross? That's Swim a good point. Okay. 7 o'clock in the morning every day. So the first two days I went when the pool first opened, and it was 46 degrees outside. Yep. The pool was nice, and then right. we got back out, and it was 46 okay, it was degrees. And I, I agree with that. I imagine, <coughs> if, if I was to hypothesize, I bet the Red Cross's reasoning is that not so much the water temperature, but when you're in the air, that temperature, you may, you might get high the thermic quicker than you would imagine being wet and they figure yeah. kids aren't going to pay attention cool, cool, to the signs yeah. i don't know i imagine that's what they're thinking is no, that kids just, will sit out there in the cold the, and get wet and get a you know yeah be hypothermic yeah i'm an adult and i made that choice yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you want to live dangerously you do that. um so austin will you check with the red cross and try to figure out why that was put in and see if we need to revise it mm -hmm. are you okay with that i'm fine with that okay Thanks for bringing that up. I didn't know they shut down. And yeah. That's been when I was out of town. It was just this last Sunday. Last so. Sunday they were shut down early. Yep. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. All right. We'll look into if we want to change that or not. All right, Kev? Okay. All right. Next item is cemetery and airport. I just want to say I, I read that we had trees down at the cemetery and I just drove by on the way home tonight before after being here in the afternoon and they cleaned it up beautifully. The, air, the cemetery looks really nice. I couldn't even tell where the tree went down it. That's how well they cleaned it. So, Okay, well, matter of issues at the airport, I see on the police department weekly report on Thursday the 8th, met with FAA on security issues at the airport. What security issues? No security issues on our part. They were meeting because they're, they're informing us of possibilities of illegal use of small airports. They wanted us to make sure we were prepared for them. And that's all that was. It wasn't anything wrong with our airport. They were going from airport to airport talking to each, each uh, individual, whoever's in charge uh, of of the airport. I'd like to find, to recognize Al Qaeda. To to is it just to say to potential? Every year to do the same exact thing. We get a manual and we go over certain things and that's it. You got the manual? Yes, I do. Could I see it? Nope. Why not? Yeah, sure you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. it is is regulations, <laughs> things a little crazy. It has nothing to do with Al Qaeda or anything like that. It has to do with, you know, people misusing aircraft. It's not not what you think. It's pretty boring, actually. Misusing aircraft. Sure. Transportation of certain things. Okay. Well. Certain yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. Stuff like that. All okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Chief. As long as you're up here, I noticed when we discussed the uh, police committee meeting last time, 
we did talk about speed bumps at that meeting and mm -hmm. putting it in potentially at, I believe it was 9th and Walnut. And I don't think we ever, there, um, and I think, Kevin, you were like, we already have one at 8th. We have a stop sign at 8th and Walnut. There's a stop light at 8th. Why but, do we need a uh, stop? But they said that they speed up, and I think Chief said he knows they do. Oh, well, they take off from the stop sign pretty at, well. From if eight, you're not dropping kids off, they're, they're fly pretty good. So he said that they do gas it from 8th and Walnut to 10th when school's in session, right? Yeah. Maybe, and to be fair here, I'm not a huge fan of speed bumps to start with. Uh, and they make all different kinds, the sharp ones to just rolling ones like you see. Um, we definitely need a stop sign at ninth and wall. Is that what you'd rather people fly around that corner? You'd, you'd and there's kids walking out from cars and stuff there. On ninth. On ninth heading south. It's heading south. Yeah. Okay. But the real speed issue is going the, east -west. the other speed issue is right in front of them. Again, you have kids running out from the cars. And a lot of people take off from that stop sign, and if they're not, they got two straight blocks before they get to the highway. Mm -hmm. Something, either another sign or something, you know, if anything, but I don't know what the heck would. Well, we Imagine initially talked about putting signs. speed bumps right there in front, right before you hit 9th Street, and then we'd have to, they'd be temporary ones, right? We talked about putting temporary ones in there? You can order temporary ones, because in the wintertime, if you don't lift your blades, you're going to shear them right off. Mm-hmm. But you don't think it's necessary? Well, I'm just saying that the people that live there say they speed, and if if Chief says they know they speed, I mean, I guess all you can do is say you know when schools out, kids back out of there all the time. I mean, I don't, I can't remember the last time there was a big accident there, though. Oh, we have there every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, we Kevin. have accidents all over. We have them once in a while. But so, no, the, but I mean, no, the backing is where we have most of our accidents. Right. But again, that's not in the high speed area. It's it's, it's over between okay. uh, 9th and 8th Street. You know where, where the kids are at that I'm more concerned about. If, if a teenager backs out, yes, I mean that's their own fault for not paying attention. So you guys are okay with not not doing anything? Okay. Do, do we need to prepare an ordinance for a stop sign at night? Would that help? Uh, let it? Gary and I finish working on that. Okay. I know we've been doing the we got the whole book piece they're redoing, so you guys yeah. can do it all at one time. Okay. And one oh, and well, that leads me into the one other discussion that we didn't talk about at the last meeting was. We had initially talked about stop signs at 5th and Broadway and 6th and Broadway. Remember? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so is that going to be part of your book, too? That could be under recommendations because they've never had them there. What are, what we're redoing is we're taking some of the stuff out of the the book that's no longer existing, you know, or some places we, we will need to put stuff where we've built new things, you know, stuff like that. Well, there's nothing of anything there. We can give it to you as a suggestion. You guys can look at it if you want. Are you still looking at North 8th Street? Uh, no. After the after what I read about the last meeting, probably not. Only one person was concerned that I, or maybe two that I was aware of. So, and to be honest, in 18 years as chief, I can't remember one accident between the whole area. I, I, I wouldn't even know how far to even go back. To be well, I was concerned about it. I've set up there a lot of times at different times to see the traffic go by there. And the past is the past. We've got more going on out there now than we used to. So I'm concerned about Well, your about traffic's going to pick up the more homes that are built out there. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But the, your road up here on Nathan narrows, too. Yes. And if you do anything, go like no parking the first block north of North Street because it's that concrete wall. Um, there's only one person that parks there sometimes in a rental house clip to eat north end. Uh, now, even the residents don't park on that side because nobody wants to bang their doors into the concrete wall. Well, Open it up a little bit because right now, we sat there, several of us now, running radar. <laughs> and I think the highest speed limit was just right at 30, a little over 30. Most of the speed limits coming down that area, they're in the 20s. Because it does narrow down from up there where the person complaining is to this last block coming down or two blocks, it narrows way down. Well, the, one of the one of the things was in trying to figure out how to take the traffic or take the on street parking there back away from the stop sign. Somebody said, "Well, there's no parking up there." Well, there is parking up there. Oh, yeah. Everybody. I don't think there's the, any no parking up there at all. Even on this side to go to the people's front doors, you have to park there. There's no off street parking there, but all of them have off street parking. The one at the corner there has a driveway, and company to that house goes around the corner to park, and the next house over where a lot of the parking is on. 
on the east side of the which, uh, which part of the street are you talking about? East side of 8th Street. No, no, how south far up? Two houses, second house south of Ann. Uh, Ann. A lot, of the, a lot of them have backyard parking. Exactly. They have backyard parking. It's not like they have no option. That's what I'm saying. Yep. If we would have to mark those spots out to yep. make it clearer at that intersection. Yeah, that's even what one of the owners told me. He goes, we don't park in the back. He goes, we don't park down there for very good reason. Okay. But by the same token, you said the very narrowness of it's what's slowing people down somewhat, maybe. Yeah. So if you open it up, do we actually... Slow you down, period. Yeah. I would think, keeping yeah. the narrowness there. The only reason you'd open it up is for safety reasons where you would give them a little more room, but you could probably pick speed back up as well. It is just going to be any time you develop outside of a residential area like that, you're going to have traffic pick up. Yes, no traffic what. is picked up. And also the and trail. And if you ever decide to redo those roads out there to asphalt or concrete, it'd be even worse. And then we're encouraging the trail, you know, signage mm -hmm. to the trail. And oh, there are other the trail brought the trail. Into, into the depot, then we won't have to worry about the, all that excess traffic out that's there. Yeah. You'll, still have, you'll still have the trailhead there, and that's mm -hmm. what's advertised. Right. So you'll still have some traffic out there. But someone but, like from mine to town, oh, like you me, go right I up the trail, go up that way. I just take yeah. right up through the flat going through I there, agree. So. It's just, it's just, to be honest, I don't think there's an actual great res resolve of the whole situation. Yet. Okay. okay. And then let's just go 5th and 6th and Broadway real quick. Um, Sixth Todd, do you want to... Todd, you were the one that brought Fifth it to... 5th does too. 6th uh -huh. and Broadway, there's no yield signs. Yeah, there is. Oh, I'm is sorry, 5th and Broadway. Fifth sorry, Broadway. Sorry, you're right. You're right. 5th and Broadway, there's none. And 4th and Broadway, there isn't. Only 6th? Uh -huh. Only 6th, not 5th? No, there used to be like no U-turns and stuff like there back when the O8 and G and stuff like were there. But uh, that's all been gone. No control at fifth. I never saw a problem. No, it's, it's both those run control. There, and this, as that Sunflower UP Credit Union goes in, and with El Ranchero's business and the laundromat, then the grocery store, it's there's some pretty close calls there. And there's a lot of parking right to the corner, especially there at El Ranchero. So it's difficult to see. And I think everyone presumes that as, as it develops, this street or that has the right of way. Off street parking for the credit union, but still, it's, that place will be a lot of traffic down there, even more than there is now. So, you guys kind of keep an eye on it. If you think it's something we need to do, we'll do it. Chief, are you up here for the vest? Yeah, I am up here. I just stay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You have an opinion? Well, I saw on the police department that uh, you had a June birthday, so I'd like to say happy birthday, Chief. <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah, I turned 48. Oh, my gosh, I wasn't going to Happy birthday. That. Huh? <laughs> It's the friend that remembers the date but forgets the year, but you added your own so. No, I, I doesn't bother me. I, okay. I turned 18 years as chief, and I became chief when I was 29. Congratulations. Uh, in, the, in the packet I put about the new bulletproof vests, all of our vests are now outdated. The, the manufacturer's only worn them for five years. Uh, anything past that, if there's anything penetration after that, they won't warranty anything uh, after that. That's why the federal government has started the Bulletproof Vest Partnership Program. Uh, they started it many, many years ago, and we use it every time. They were reimbursed. It used to be 50%, now it's up to $400 is all, uh, because there's so many requests for the money across the United States. So that's what you see on that page there. The total of the vest is 10989 Now that's without the carriers. You used to be able to buy, if you buy the vest, you got a carrier with it. They said about five years ago they stopped doing that. Now you got to buy everything separate because there's so many different types of carriers anymore. Uh, the partnership will bring us back $4,400. Walmart gave us a donation of 1000 and I put in for 1000 to Blue Valley. They have always done very well. Now the donations have been reduced over the years. Um, Walmart uh, is usually given more than not. So this is the first time in 18 years we've actually had to look for use any of our own money to help pay for this. Well, I had it down as $4,589 $4, to pay just for the vest. And the $2,182, we're going to try to take it out of special law. Well, last Friday, I got a card, and Michelle Slippin and I came to my office and gave us the donation in Mike's name because she had money given in his memorial. And this is what the card said. It says, please accept this memorial in Sloop's name to do what you wish. Mike enjoyed working as an officer and took pride in his job. Hopefully this will help in some way. So her and I sat down and we talked about what to do with the money. And I told her we were buying the vest and the carriers had to be bought too. She says that'd be absolutely awesome. So we want to take the 2182 out and take the rest of it, 
put it toward the vest, and now we have to leave us with $3,771. So you're, you're going to take, you're still taking... 31, no, 37.71 out of EMR, MER. 37 what? 37, $3,771. Okay. Wouldn't it be appropriate, Chief, instead of taking that out of MER, to take that out of... What's that fund you get? What about that drug money? Don't you use those vests on a drug bust? Yes, Wouldn't we do. It be appropriate it's to our, take it? This isn't the only vest stuff we're looking at. We've already earmarked it for other, what they call, um, strike plates, which will be coming once we get the total bid for that and the money will be coming out of that as well. Okay, well, this special law mm -hmm. uh, has got $5,035 in yeah, it. Yeah, good 75% of that will be taken up on this other stuff that we're talking about that we don't take out of uh, uh, budget that way or general fund. Well, but wouldn't it be appropriate to, to since you do use the vest and drug bus, what to I'm saying take is it if, out of there? If we take that out of there, we won't have any money to finish the project we're trying to do with the strike plates for well, what are rifle strike rounds. Plates? Just the rifle round plates you can throw on. Say you have to go an active shooter to school or something. They come in a web. You put them on. They sit in front of your vest. They'll take rifle rounds. To fit into your bulletproof vest? You can go. fit them in, but because of the weight, you don't wear those full time. There's a web thing that comes with them. and You put them on. There's one front, one back. And then you can take it off when you're done. That's that's what we're looking to use that money for, but that'll eat up probably 75 to 80 percent of that fund already. Well, it's still leave a thousand dollars. I don't want to run it dry. That's why we keep yeah. some in there just for just in case things. And Austin and I talked about it. And I said, why don't we take it out of MER? That way we don't take it out of general fund either. Which under equipment is usually comes out of general fund. Okay, so this this fund. I want to understand the special law fund. Mm -hmm. This is money that this is all drug money, right? This is money seized in a drug bust uh -huh. or assets seized in mm -hmm. a drug bust. So you don't have regular income into this. You don't have a you don't have a revenue flow into this account. It's not a constant revenue. No, by all means, not. That's why we don't try to use it all at one time in case something does come up. That we have. To, we always try to keep a little bit of money in there. I wish we were like Junction City and had like four million dollars. That'd be nice, but we're not. <laughs> uh, we don't want the drug traffic. No, they got the interstate either. that helps them out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My only question was uh, taking it to MER. It seems like a weird place to take it. It does to me of. too. I, you know, and I talked to Austin about whether it should stay in the police department budget rather than MER. So I looked up in the ordinance where we set up MER, and it says uh, equipment shall mean machinery vehicles and other equipment or personal property, including but not limited to computer hardware and software, which the city is authorized to purchase for municipal purposes. So it's just whichever one account you guys feel more comfortable having it come out of. Personally, it doesn't bother me which one you take it out of. I just, I just thought it was kind of, MER just kind of Well, I think Austin's whole thing was just as, little, as much as we can not take out of the general fund about it. I don't want it out of the general fund, and I don't want it out of MER. I'm just trying to find a place to get it that doesn't doesn't uh, impact the budget that way. I just thought we had. Uh, I guess I always think of MER more as uh, machinery, equipment, equipment yeah. larger purchases rather Robo than a vest. But um, whichever guys, wh whichever you guys decide, is okay. Drones. Hmm? No. <laughs> <laughs> Drones. <laughs> what what company did you get the vest out of last time? Out of last time? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I think they might know. Um, it's a You're not contributing. I don't uh, remember which company they yeah, came from. They were made by Second Chance. The reason we actually, I can explain to the hardwire. The reason we went with hardwire, it is the lightest vest that they make on the market right now with the same capabilities uh, of a vest that's a little cheaper, but it's probably three times the thickness. This one is a lot. They just came out with this last year. And that's why we went with the hard wire made by uh, Safari. You remember what we paid for them last time? Oh, probably eight, eight hundred and something, maybe nine hundred, something like that. But that was five, six years ago or more. Okay. Okay. Like anything else? Keeps going oh out. yeah. Well, you got, got in the total thing. You can buy cheaper vests, oh, yeah. but I'll tell you, they weigh a lot more. They're a lot thicker and bulkier too. These are made to. Not as, not as hard on Keep you mobile and hostile. So I went in and kind of motion? Not me. I moved $3,771 for the vest come out of the MER. Second. Okay, basically we're going to purchase 
the Thunderbird from Thunderbird Firearms, from Thunderbird Farms. the 11 vests with the reimbursement. And the net should be the 3771. Yes. Is that your motion? Yes. All that, add all that. <laughs> Todd. Yeah, sure. <laughs> One thing, so if Blue Valley does not come through with theirs, then we'll pull that out of uh, special loan. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the 3771 is a good number? That'll be that number. Now, that's my whatever shipping is, because I don't know what shipping is, but if the $1,000 doesn't come out of Blue Valley, if they don't make it, then we'll just take it out of special loan and make that up. Thank you, okay. Michelle Swibionic. Thank yep. you, Mike Swibionic. I'll be thank sending you. her a note. Thank you as well. Yes. I don't know if anybody here. Mike was an officer for us for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, you think our motion's okay? Yep. As it is? Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. Uh, All right. Mary, uh, a clarification on the 4th of July, the shooting of the fireworks. Be okay for Saturday night for both those First. parties. Uh, now we're still the Fourth of July still remains the same midnight as usual by ordinance. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's not changing at all. Okay, I just making sure because you guys said a one night only. My like, well, ordinance has Tuesday night as well. I just want to make sure they didn't change. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Chief. I'd, one more thing. You don't want to sit down, do you? Oh no, I don't like sitting. <laughs> okay. So uh, one other thing that was in the packet last time was uh, the wellness um, review. And uh, I sent an email to uh, Debbie telling you, to, and, and I couldn't think I copy to Austin, to say I'm a, I'm a little confused with the report as it was presented. She forwarded it, it to me and I forwarded it to Pam. Pam that gonna questions? Shoot, she's going to shoot you another email. Okay, so just so you know the questions I posed, you guys had some questions. These mm -hmm. are the three questions. I, I had five questions. I said, the weight loss to date for the group, I wanted to know if that was a net weight loss or a weight loss. In other words, if it's just weight loss, let's say you lose 20 pounds and you gain 20 pounds and you lose 20 pounds. If it's total lo weight loss, it's 40 pounds. But if it's net weight loss, it's zero. Their so weight's only taken once a year. There's yeah, not, but you just. She doesn't like, say you, like you said, you gain and lose, gain and lose. It's only taken once a year. Okay, well, th I guess what I, I took, I found the report from the last time. And it said since inception, the total weight loss was 79.5 pounds. And this time it said 341. So that meant that 291 pounds was just this year. So that didn't make sense to me. 291 well, pounds. Well, I can tell you I have one officer who's lost almost 100 pounds himself. They will. In one year. Oop. In one year. Well, less than a year, actually. Okay. Well, anyway. I just thought if we could do it year by year yeah. rather than since inception that it might make sense to me. Um, the other thing is, um, oh, I wanted Chief Ackerman, I said uh, please contact Chief Ackerman and get a list of cities that allow police officers to exercise during work hours. Then send an email out to the clerk of those cities and ask what goals slash requirements they have for their officers and also ask them if they have a physical fit for duty test. So the other people that are paying for their officers to exercise, just I want to know what their programs they have. Because that was some of the things she actually said, is we need to set up goals and requirements and we don't know where to start. So I thought we'd start with other cities that already have this in place. And the very last thing I just asked, um, how many officers participate in each year when we get a per year? So, you okay with that? Sure. Right. On, it, the only thing I worry about is the kind of information you're looking for. You, you can't go by officer by officer. You, you, you'll never get personal uh, weight loss per person. I don't think that, I and I and I agree, I don't think we're, but I just wanted to make sure that it makes sense to me. Sure. Is, that, is, that, is it really what this whole thing is, is about officers working now on duty? Is, is, that, is that what with all the, every year we, 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 we talk about this, and it seems to be more of the discussion is it because they're working out there? Is that the big hang up with Well, with it's, a, it's an issue for me because you're using time that we're paying you for to go work out. And if you're using it correctly, there should be a visible difference in the physical condition of the officers. And I think last, last meeting, I made that comment and Councilman Fry made the comment, well, uh, if we require them to meet a certain proficiency, physically, mm -hmm. then we have trouble hiring them anyway. We have trouble getting people to, to apply if, if, anyway. If you can. 
But I just don't buy. I said we buy the very best we can buy in vests, in cars, in guns, in rifles. Mm -hmm. And to put an officer there that we don't have proficiency tests, we don't have physical tests, because then we can't get people to apply. What that tells me is if they can't meet the, the tests, why would we hire them? Well, for one, you don't know that you can actually make them take a proficiency test. And I'll tell you, do a little research online. There's, it's a very, very touchy issue unless you're hiring new people. If you're hiring new people, it's like your employment. You, there's a certain thing that the people have to go in and do. Mm -hmm. You all of a sudden break in and tell somebody that's worked here 15 years, you're going to have to meet a proficiency test? Good luck with that. Todd, if they had gained 100 pounds and I'm they can no longer do I'm their job. I'm just telling you, because they were not hired on a proficiency test, and there's never been one, and now you want to give them one? And, you, and you've got no better yeah. skate 100 pounds and say, well, this is a higher number. I'm saying, I this know, is a policy. Saying, it's a very touchy situation, and make sure your attorney looks at it and when. That's just all I'm saying. I'm not opposed to it. So don't, don't make a decision without... Well, I think Great even knowledge. I think even Pam said we need to have some goals and what to look forward. I mean, sure, she, in can, her she can help set personal goals for yeah. that person. Yeah, so just so we understand, and I thought, well, the best source is to look at other cities that have the same program. Sure. What do they set up just to have a, a starting point? So. Sure. And that's why we just didn't have any information, like what are the goals, what routines are expected. Well, you won't know what the goals are anyway. That's personal information. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. She will tell you if they've met their goals or not, but they cannot tell you personal information on, a, on, a, on an employee period. Well, I think well, what we want to do is have goals for the wellness plan yes. overall. No, I, yes. I, I, I totally agree with you all. Not on a per not person. Sure, sure I, I, agree, I agree with you all that. that I got no problem at all with that. Yeah. But uh, like say, when you were talking about you just long as it's not per person, I got no problem at all with that. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're, if you're saying, uh, okay, here's the program. Last year, our officers lost 210 pounds. Mm -hmm. This year, our officers lost 250 pounds. Well, if it's the same officers that have gained that weight back and now lost that weight again, I mean, pretty soon you're going to have no officers at all. Who cares if they gained a bunch of weight and they lost it again? Well, but my point is, it doesn't. It's, it's not giving us any information. I mean, you got to say, if you continue to say every year you're losing 200 pounds, you know, mm -hmm. Pretty soon, you've lost all the weight that your officers ever weighed no, because no, they've gained weight back and lost it again. Same officer goes up or comes down, goes mm -hmm, up and comes mm -hmm. down. That's good. At least they're trying to work it back off. That's very hard on the heart, that yo-yo dieting or yo-yo up and down, up and down. You don't have to tell an officer conditions that are hard. We know what stress is. And that's more of anything is what this is for, is stress relief. Weight loss is a bonus. You have no idea the stress of an officer unless you've been one. And that's exactly what this is for. So and that would be one of the main goals is stress. Stress, relief. stress relief is a goal. You can't really measure stress as a goal, though. It's but it would. We're be hoping one it of does. The, one of you the know, priorities. It's, it's, it's an offer. Mm -hmm. No, my, my whole thing was on this thing. If, you, if you're so worried about working off duty, then take it take it away from they can't work off on duty. The officers that want to work out are going to work out anyway. And you're still going to pay I for it. I said that. I said that exactly when we started paying. It just, it just there's a lot of hype. For a lot of things, that just I don't understand. I guess. Well, I get hit from people who are saying, "Are you still doing that?" More than almost anything else, more than potholes, more than almost anything, is the officers working on duty. No, see, I've never had one person come to me and say, "Well, of course, they're not going to come to you." <laughs> well, I would hope they would. I can. Well, they I can. Not. I have. A lot of, I would I assume you'd want me to bring it to you, yes or no. Right. <laughs> Just like Denny brought up at last meeting, you know, somebody came to him and said, you got officers that are going in there, they might pedal around on a bike 10 minutes and then they just stand around if, for an hour and sign know, in and sign out. If I have one person say, say say that, that doesn't bother me. I mean, to be honest, my officers don't make everybody happy. If they want to slander an officer like Big that, whether it happened or not, I don't care. <laughs> if, if Pam tells me that they're doing this by their records, I believe Pam. Well, if they sign in, of course, you know, they're there. Oh, sure. But I need to, what I, we, my whole hang up with that was, I need to make sure they're spending time there, not just going and signing 10 minutes later, they walk out and go. You know what I mean? But you have that with anybody you're paying the membership for, anybody in the city. They can walk in and sign, I walk right out the back door. Okay. What I'm saying is, if there's such a hang up on a work on duty, then don't let work out on duty. No, I'm for that. Just leave them alone. And also, Todd. Because if they're like the firefighters and the other people, then you're, you're not worried about them doing that. Then. That's right. That's so, right. 
That's up to you guys. Yeah, okay. All that does is that's, that's, that's a yearly thing. That's well, let's that was in the program. You let's just see what the other cities come back with. I, I like I'm anxious to see that they for What's the that? ones. I like the PR they're getting over there. Public relations. Well, I, I, I do too. Everybody else. I do too. And there. I think you what I was going to say was, you know, i just if I had to guess, a lot of people think working on general is a waste of time. So they're probably not necessarily going to value it. Well, they're in the general. people that are working out there too. They're in there. They see the officers in there. They're Th not those aren't, These are people at random. Are people these are people that work out as yeah, well. Yeah, they're in there. Okay. Tell them also to contact other council people with their concerns because I'd like to hear from one. All right. Okay. Did you hear that, Dennis? Okay. Moving along. Thank you, you, Chief. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. I just wanted everyone to know what I had posed to Debbie. Good. Um, and uh, anything else for police and fire? Admin and finance, do you guys all give me Austin's review? Everybody get it done? No. Keith? Okay. You have it done? No. Do you, do you still have it? I'm not sure. He was here. You have it? Oh. Okay. I'll pass it down in there. And Vicki, you'll find yours? Yeah, of course I will. Okay. I will I'll try. I will try. It's done. I did it. I did okay. it. Okay. All right. Mayor, uh, I don't know if this oh, is. Oh, thank you. I, did, I skipped you. Sorry, bud. Mayor, yes. I, I don't know if this should be addressed under there, but, um, but we're just real spotty with our code violation enforcement. And I know our code officer is often, often off on other duties. And I think we ought to try to address that, whether we need somebody part-time. Yeah. Did I ask one? Is Chief still here? Chief, is there any way that our, didn't our police officer do that at one point? Do some code? Many, many years ago, we used to do it, but we haven't done it in years. And then when I had an officer off on maternity leave, she did it for Dave because she was That's right. put yeah, into death. Know. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know if, you know, you guys are well aware of what the code violations are. And we don't want to take over the code thing. <laughs> you want to talk about something that takes hours and hours and hours. And these guys are riddled with cases the way it is. You don't want to write down addresses? Okay. No, we already they, do they that. Are, they we are already do that. We already do that. We already do that. We fill out a sheet. We oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that's, what I, that's what I just want to make sure is that yeah. since you guys are driving around, it seems efficient. Well, no, Austin asked us to do that oh, a month or so ago, mm -hmm. and they've been doing it. They'll oh. fill out a sheet of addresses, what it is, and they'll bring them in. Okay. Great. So. That's what I'm... Okay. The police involved too. And did you know that? I didn't no, know the police did that. that. No, that you so, got him doing it. Um, and we haven't had a report yeah. of what violations are being addressed oh, that's and true. whether they Dave been. was giving us that last summer, wasn't uh -huh. he? So yes. can you get an update from mm -hmm. Dave? I think we should go have more breaks. Okay. All right. Wage determinations. On page 28, we have some wage determinations for the pool. We do approve the swimming pool wage determinations for these four individuals, unless you want them listed. Five. Five. Or five, five. sorry. Five. <laughs> that line messes with me. <coughs> Second. 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 Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seven so now. And also, I uh, wanted to approve, ask for your approval of appointment for uh, Craig Olson. He's also falls in that window that. He really ended April because that when the election was in April, and we're just rolling it forward to January of 2018. So just a motion to approve him as city attorney until that time. Who would approve Craig Olds as city attorney? Until January 18th. January 18th. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 no. Thank you very much. City attorney is not here. Do we have a reason for an executive session? Uh, Mayor? Um, I move the City Council recess into executive session pursuant to non-elected personnel matters, exception KSA 75-4319-B1 in order to discuss a performance matter involving a city employee. The open meeting to resume in the City Council chamber at, I think I need um, 15 minutes. So it would be 38, 8.38? Yeah. Beginning at 8.23, resuming at 8.38. Okay. Exef executive session will include the governing body, the mayor. I found out the mayor we don't have to list anymore. Remember when oh, we had the COMA okay. training? 
and said the mayor is automatically in. So then, do you want Austin? The governing body and the city administrator. Okay. Second? Is second. there a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Six, one. All right. Or go home. <laughs> yeah, that's why you can't judge us. Wait for me. I know. Of course. What? We're going to move to the rest of the time. I know. It's about 50 there. Oh, the last time. We opened it in the executive session. I know. You kicked it. You kicked it. Kevin? How you doing, Debbie? Doing all right. Good. Another nice day in Kansas Oh, it was today. beautiful. Wasn't it beautiful? Nice rain. All summer. All summer would be great. If it stay like this, yeah. I don't have it, but I'll ask Austin to be yes. <laughs> I guess. Okay. We will. Um, no binding action was taken during executive session, and the regular session of the city council will now continue. Uh, the next item is roundtable. I have a, a few quick ones. I think the crews did an amazing job picking up the limbs around town with the storm. I love the fact that the dump was open additional hours. There were 212 visitors on one day. Can you imagine that dump, 212 visitors? So, um, so that saved our crews a lot of time too. Mm -hmm. Them hauling. You should see that. Was that after the storm? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm just very happy that I our crew Austin worked to see if he could get help out there earlier. Mm -hmm. Our crews worked hard. The dump was open extra hours. That was a good decision. Um, uh, congratulations to uh, Greg Martin, who will be appearing in the Kansas Shrine Bowl. It's uh, the Shrine Bowl. Um, it, uh, I'm just going to read it. It says, Governor Brownback has proclaimed 8, July 29th, 2017 as Shrine Bowl Day in the state of Kansas in honor of the 44th annual Shrine Bowl football game to be played on that day in El Dorado at BG Product, Products Veteran Stadium, Butler County Community College. So congratulations to Greg Martin. Um, the pieces of the gym floor were compliments of the Alumni Association. If you don't want them from the old high school, please give them to someone from Marysville High that would like them. But that was a nice gift from nice. um, the Alumni Association. I just want to get, give a little thank you to the Jolly Jogathon. I helped with that. And uh, Cleve Wall Wallstrom and Moni, they do an excellent job. There's hundreds of people from out of town that are athletes that participate in this. And this is the second year I helped. So I just want to thank them for doing that event in Marysville. I also want to thank Sarah Morrison for the books that she donated to uh, the council as well as some committees. So thank you, uh, probably Kester House Foundation Board as well as Sarah Morrison for doing that. And the last thing I'm going to say is I met with the AmeriCorps group that was here working on the pantry. I met, I believe, eight of them. Um, they said they made great strides. I'm going to volunteer at the pantry this Thursday, so I should see all the painting being done. Very nice group of people, all having good servants' hearts. They're from LA, Minnesota, New York, so and uh, looked like they worked really hard. So thank you for um, supporting. They said to thank you for the pool passes. Yes. So thank you for doing that for them. And I think they really enjoyed being in Marysville. Said it was a nice community. With that being said, Keith, you're up. Good to be back, to be back for a little bit. So that's why I got. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you're back. All right, Bill. I just like to thank all the city employees also for the landfill being open and the job they did picking the limbs up. Okay. Darlene? Well, I want to congratulate Austin for surviving his first year with us. <laughs> One year, that's yes. right. Hallelujah. June 20th, right? June 20th. That's first Tuesday. anniversary. Yeah. Surviving. Brilliantly surviving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? 
No. Okay, Todd? Um, I could have brought it up under police and fire, I guess, but I kind of thought I figured I'd hold it. We've, we've been working on the um, issues with Keystone Road, whether it belongs to the city or belongs to the county, et cetera, um, is whether it's a dedicated road. Eighth Road um, from south of the highway, is that a 50% county, 50% city road? Doing the Eighth road, road, south of Rhodes. Oh, oh. I'm going that way. Yeah, yeah. township. Is it half yeah, township? Half, half township. Half, half township city. and half city. Yeah. Do we patrol it? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To get to get. Yeah. That's not uncommon. We patrol out the Dave's body shop. Outside, we patrol the building division just because. It's, there's some people out there apparently got the impression that we don't patrol it because it's not in the city or whatever, or that it's only half city. I don't know if well, we, we can. We have to because half the road is ours, so we have to drive down the road anyway. So, but you can, and since you're deputized, you can ticket in either direction. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that's kind of what I explained to them. Um, so they, they had some concerns about people coming from outside of town, really hauling and not not letting off the gas when they crest there by. Uh, um, Heights Avenue, and heading heading northbound. So I don't know if that's something too where we could look at maybe putting the speed trailer out there at some point. I don't know if that'd be worthy or not. But I basically told him I'd to to bring it up and confirm that it was in fact something that we are patrolling and it does matter. It's it's one of those I think if you live on the edge of the community, a lot of people feel like they get less attention paid. So it's not my ward, but concerned anyway. That's Anything all. else? That's it. Vicki? Um, I want to thank uh, Streets Department, Water and Sewer Department, because that break that was down at 3rd and the highway, that was a lot going on, and that's a lot of manual labor. That took a lot of work for those guys. It was hot, and I think they worked around the clock to get that repaired, and the section of pipe they took out had big old long cracks in them, and um, we're going to resolve that with our, with like like Kevin said, you know, we need to get on it. We need to get on it so that we don't have those anymore. Because that is very intensive labor to dig those pipes out. It's a lot. So I just want to thank those guys. It's hard work. I hear people saying, "Well, I see somebody standing on a shovel," but those guys were in the down in that down in that hole, which was over their head. I don't know how ten feet, six feet, but it is a lot of manual labor down in there to clear those pipes up. A couple up. feet of gunk. And My gunk. Yeah, they're there. standing <laughs> in it. They're standing in it. So I want to say thank you, gentlemen, for the work you did uh, to get us back online there. Thank you. Are those pipes we can send the cameras through and just check? I mean, is that something that... Not through that. Not through the force main. That's high pressure. Yeah, yeah. that's a black line. Anything else, Vic? That's it. Thank Denny? you. Denny? I have no. Kevin? I'm like Vicki. I just want to thank the water and sewer guys. You know, they come in after hours to cut the street mm -hmm. up and open it up, you know. I'm like Vicki. I'm glad we got our crews like we do, you know, just because it was that, they that the evening. They, they stayed right there and worked on it, you know, and we got it back up. Austin, on the other side of that, do we have enough pipe in case something like this happens again on one? In fact, on, on uh, he was in the middle of placing an order to replace his 14 inch stock, and okay. he's about to pay, make another order on 14 inch stock so yeah we had we had a i know a, we had a piece there that's what i was asked because i know yeah. the time before we had to go get some we we are being prepared okay yes <laughs> okay i wouldn't entertain a motion I, I, I got oh. One more thing. okay since, since the fuel prices are getting lower and lower is i mean i brought this up several times in years past of contracting fuel while it's down where it's at is that something that we continue to check into as far as what do you oh I don't know uh, contract 1500 gallons 2000 gallons at a low price so you don't have to continue to pay gallons of fuel at a higher price we're checking check it yeah I'll check into it check. okay I would move to the motion move to adjourn second all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seven oh. Chief, we're really glad you were here tonight. Yeah, Chief. There was a lot of questions directed.